When a person seeks to end his or her life, it's usually to cut off their misery with little thought about what will come next for loved ones or their own souls. The circumstance of a person ending their life is very sensitive and requires a patient wisdom we really need to get from God. Perhaps more than in any other circumstance, loved ones of those who terminated their lives question the deceased's eternal destiny, hoping that they are comforted and hoping to meet them again. If we are asked, our answers should be truthful and come from God's word. There was such a severe time of crisis in my own life, and while at work one night, I began planning to end my life a few days later in order to escape my misery. The Lord turned me from this when I thought about those I'd witnessed to and how terribly it would reflect on God. He didn't deserve to be maligned for my weakness, and my actions could also discourage others from trusting him. I realized that I still had faith God would deliver me, but I hadn't yet considered my eternal destiny at all. Of course, I knew that ending my life wasn't a good thing, and as I drove home, the Lord gave me a verse to prevent such thoughts in the future. It was Hebrews 9.27 that says, It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. I saw by this that God appoints the time of death, and by taking my own life, I was putting myself in his place, and it would clearly show that I wasn't in right relationship with God, which isn't a good position to be in when you're about to meet him. It was a few more years before I studied the Bible further on this subject, and this is what I learned. The first scripture I saw was, Thou shalt not kill, from the Ten Commandments. Why should anyone think this verse doesn't apply when taking your own life? It is murder, and worse still, it's premeditated murder upon oneself. And while there are no direct scriptures addressing the act of self-termination, there are five examples of it, and none of these men were in right relationship with God. First came King Saul and his armor bearer, Counselor Ahithophel, Captain Zimri, and Judas Iscariot. There are scriptures about these in the description. It's a question in my mind if self-termination is even possible for those who are in right relationship with God, as I've become aware of several who have attempted it, but were divinely prevented from succeeding. But if there were ever someone with a real desire to end his life, it would have to be Job whose material life and health were utterly destroyed, he then enduring great ridicule in place of comfort from those closest to him. Job longed for death, but knew that a time for God to appoint had to come first. And so he waited painfully for that time to come. Job 14, 13, and 14, we find Job praying, Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change come. The conclusion I reached from scripture is unfavorable toward anyone who ends their own life and shows that such were not in right relationship with God and they cannot inherit his kingdom. We should never go beyond God's revealed truth in seeking to comfort ourselves or anyone else. Jesus told us that there would be few saved, and in 1 Peter we see that even the righteous are scarcely saved. How much less, then, can a murderer inherit eternal life? Isn't our enemy a murderer? The question of eternity for those who ended their lives is often not asked, but now you have a view from the light of God's word. Seek to comfort those questioning by sharing the truth, for in so doing you are directing them to Jesus. May God bless you today.